that was not surprising, really, was it? If you looked at that team there, you looked at that performance, you looked at that result, you think one of those teams is uh, <laughs> a threat of being relegated. It, it wasn't Everton. Everton won the winners there today against Manchester United in another performance that it just proves that this team has checked out this season. And it's, it's, it's not about talking about individuals anymore, is it? We can talk about Harry Maguire, we can talk about Wan-Bissaka, and no doubt I will in this match reaction, but it's just, I'm not surprised. Genuinely, if I was a betting man, I'm a betting man, but if I was going to bet on that game, I would have easily, definitely bet on Everton to win. And obviously, that it's not captain hindsight, though. As I said, it was not even slightly surprising to see the players put in that sort of performance. Everton are a relegation-threatened team. They just lost 3-2 to Burnley. And yeah, you can talk about Ralph Rannick and, and the gag and press and all the gag and the press and you can throw in your jokes, you can throw in your memes, you can do whatever you want. But this Manchester United team, the players, they've just checked out. It was pre-season pace against Leicester and that there today, they were on holiday. I'm out here having a few days away and these players, they're just, they're doing what the fuck they want. They're not playing for United. As I said, it's past that point of getting angry, isn't it? It, 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 there's, there's no, it, that's what it feels like. There's no point in getting angry with this team anymore because nobody is surprised by that performance. From the first minute to the last minute, Everton, as I said, they're in a relegation scrap. They shouldn't be, but they are. And playing it away at Goodison Park is never easy anyway for United. But they made it so easy for them. That first half an hour, any team of quality shreds that Everton team apart. They were meek. They were nervous. They were, they were scared. Goodison Park was full of tension. No real quality from them going forward. But United had nothing. We had, a, what, Rashford with a shot on target and then a cross in and he got a header on target and then that Bruno Fernandes passed through to Rashford. They're the three moments of quality I can remember in the game. Other than that, shower shit. Absolute shower shit. I swear to God, I, this week's just been full of excitement about the idea of Eric Ten Hag coming into this Manchester United team this squad ripping it all up and starting again. And he really has got to rip it up and start again. And it's mad. It's, it's crazy that we can, we can be in this situation having spent so much money over the last five, six, seven, eight years. Just constant investment. That, that performance there today was like a conference performance team. I just, I, 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 I'm done. Man United are making me check out as a fan from this season. We're not getting to... We're, 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 as soon as we drew against Leicester, the top four was done. So Martin Keown trying to hype up this game being important for United, I think, was complete bullshit. It was only important for one team, and it really completely showed. Everton were the only... As soon as that goal went in from Gordon, yes, it was unlucky. Yes, it was deflection. I don't think Maguire was particularly at fault from that, but Maguire, again today, so many hospital passes. There was one in particular, I think, to Tedes down the left-hand side in the second half. I was like, Maguire... I'm done with Maguire. I've said that before. I'll say it again. I don't think we will, he will be sold. And yes, he can play in a higher line and, and he probably suits more possession-based football. <sighs> there's, there's hardly any player in this team that I would get into an argument with to defend in terms of keeping for next season. Jaden Sancho, I definitely would. That's the first name that would come to my mind immediately. Bruno Fernandes, I'd also have that conversation. But I can understand if there's anger towards certain parts of his game. But it's just... It's, it's time and time again. I think, it's, I think our season basically finished after we had those three one-all draws. Remember that time? I think it was Southampton, Burnley and Middlesbrough. Went out to Middlesbrough in the League Cup. No, FA Cup on penalties. Uh, but we had like 72 shots or something on target in those three games. And we scored three goals. It was horrendous. That was at the time where we were just creating chance after chance after chance. But our finishing was so bad. But ever since then, it's just the, the season's just been... Just been wisping away. I don't know how to describe it. It's As I said, I'm done now. I'm done with the season. I think you're done with the season. I'm done with the season. I literally came on holiday and it looks like the players are playing like they're on holiday. They don't give a shit. Come on. They really don't. And because the season is finished, it, it's only just going to get worse. We've got Norwich the week up next week. Uh, the week after that, we've got Liverpool away who are in a fight for the Premier League title. Do you know how grim that game is going to be at Anfield? How utterly grim when you've got a United team that's willing to play like that at Anfield against the Liverpool side going for the Premier League title. Shit me, I'm not looking forward to that one. That's going to be a big humiliation, I think. And then we've got Arsenal, who are genuinely in the top four scrap. 
It just doesn't look good for United between now and the end of the season. I don't know how it improves. Yes, you can talk about Randnick, and I'm sure that lots of you will, but I'm just done with looking at the managers for the issue, especially a manager who was brought in on an interim job. And as I said, those three games there against Southampton, Burnley and Middlesbrough, that was when this team should have clicked. That was when we should have had that 4 5 nil pumping of a team that it looked like we were going to do at that point. Had that happened, I think it could have changed the trajectory of the rest of the season, but it didn't. Just frustration. And you saw it again today there, players throwing their hands in the air. Ronaldo completely and utterly isolated, no service whatsoever. I can't pick his performance out. I can pick up, I can pick apart Wamba Sackers, I can pick apart Maguire's, I can pick apart the midfield. What midfield? There is no fucking midfield. It's a joke. It's an utter joke. It has been a joke for years and years and years. And until we actually spend some real money on signing proper quality central midfielders, it will be a complete and utter joke. And the fact that we're looking at Fred and McTominay as two guaranteed starters every week for United says it all. Paul Pogba, he's already playing for Real Madrid in his head. He doesn't give a fuck anymore. Jesse Lingard, he's too busy vomiting on the bench. All these players. As I said, it's very, very hard now to come out onto this match reaction here and try and defend any of, the, try and defend any of those players. Nobody put in the sort of performance today that you go, you know what? Yeah, you really did. You gave it all. And as a fan, that's all you can genuinely ask for. It's for a player to look like they give as much shit about the club as you do as a fan. That's what you want, right? And if they do that, you forgive mistakes. You forgive results. You forgive performances. Because everybody's put in the commitment and they show that they were at least working for it. Today there, nobody did that. And now my exposure is going crazy on my camera. Nobody did that. And yet, I don't know where to turn from here. As I said, was it seven games left this season? Seven, eight games left this season? It's, it's only going to get worse with Liverpool and Arsenal and who else? I don't know who else we've got this season, but we're out of the top four. That's done and dusted. We're out of the Champions League. That's done and dusted. FA Cup and the League Cup, they disappeared a while ago. This season is just a countdown to the summer. The season is finished. The players look like they have finished. And I'll tell you what, some of them look finished as Manchester United players. As I said... I've already done my uh, video on keep or sell. If, if Eric, Eric Ten Hag becomes a manager, who is he keeping or selling? And imagine you're Eric Ten Hag watching the highlights and that game going, what the fuck am I going into? Seriously. I don't, he's a man who's built his career thus far on a very, a very intense identity of football that's built. We all know what it is. I don't need to tell you what it is. But is he, imagine him trying to implement that into that team there. Ragnick tried it at the start. He's like, well, these players aren't going to press anywhere. That's not going to happen. It'll always, of course, it will all be different with the preseason under his belt and everything there. But him looking at this team, he must be like, wow, I need to bring in some signings. Wow, I've got a lot of work to do. And he does have a lot of work to do because shh, this United team, man, it's, it, it blows my mind how much we've managed to spend over the last eight, nine years and how disconnected you fit. I swear it was only like, was it start of last season? At some point under Solskjaer, I remember looking at this squad of players and, and this team and being like, you know what, I feel like I've got a little bit of a connection back with this squad. I felt like we had lost that for a long, long time. And now it's only got worse. Now it's only got worse. And it's only going to get worse between now and the end of the season. The players, they've checked out. If there was one team there today that you thought was in a relegation fight, it would not have been Everton. Everton there deserved the three points. Largely, they were pretty damn average. But luckily... They were playing Manchester United. So Norwich next week, you're welcome for the three points. You're probably going to get Old Trafford. Liverpool, you're welcome for that as well. Arsenal, anybody want a free three points, come up to Manchester United. We're a charity team at the moment. If you want an easy win, <laughs> just come on down. Jesus Christ, though, eh? As I said, not an, not, a, not an element of surprise there. Disappointment, yes. But just a grim reality of the expectations of watching Manchester United as a fan right now. Losing there to Everton with not even a fight. Not a surprise. Dropping points against Leicester at Old Trafford to be out of the top four race. Not a surprise. When we go and we drop points against Norwich next weekend, it won't be a surprise. When we go and lose at Anfield and at the Emirates, it won't be a surprise. It's just going to be a long, drawn-out, painful end to this season. And I can't really see how that changes. Now, you might think I'm being all doom and gloom, but I swear to God, I've only had a beer. Or maybe I've had two beers and a cocktail, but that's different. I'm on holiday. But it's just, I can't see how this changes now between the end of the season. It's, it's only going to get worse. And, and, and it takes away from the excitement of what could happen under Eric Ten Hag next season. So much work to do. So many of these players, as I said, I wouldn't give a shit if they didn't play for United again. They're making me check out of this season. They clearly checked out of this season. You let me know what you think about that game in the comments below. As I said, 
It's not, it's not the point now being angry anymore. It's just, this is Manchester United right now. And it's not a surprise in any way, shape or form.